Another day, another one in 4096 chance of getting a shiny Pokemon to evolve. Luckily, I've got a couple more free shinies to give you to evolve here. I again randomized some Pokemon, mainly ones with some choice shinies here. Oh, and before we begin, how do you get a shiny, shiny evolution, you all asked? Well, you gotta evolve the Pokemon and hope it turns shiny. Yeah, I'm a monster, I know, what are you gonna do about it, huh? Anyway, make sure to like and subscribe for more and comment down below what your first shiny Pokemon was. Let's jump straight in with our first shiny evolution. I regret to inform you that our first shiny evolution is partially arachnid adjacent. I chose Skorupi for our first one. I mean, look at that shiny. Oh, so red. Looks like you'd go real fast. So instead of becoming an ogre scorpion, I thought I'd go towards something a bit different in the whip scorpion. Alright, if you're a bit of an arachnophobic like me, look away in 3, 2, 1. Alright, this is a whip scorpion or vinegar rune with some nasty vinegar spray and a whippy crack tail. I thought it'd be a cool alternate evolution for Skarupi. So instead of getting all tall and grumpy, our new Pokemon here called Europian, which can also be called European if you'd like, it becomes a more close to the ground short king with large claws that hug more closely to the body. The main attraction here is that massive long tail it has. While it can still be used for jabbing and puncturing, it can also shoot out acid. Maybe a bit more horrifying than the actual real life counterpart, but I thought it worked out. For typing, I chose Bug and Dark type. It uses poison, but it has a whole bunch of upper brutal attacks that I think warrants that dark typing. So meet our new short king. Europion, the whip Pokemon, a bug and dark type. Evolves from shiny Skorupi while knowing Night Slash. Europion is an aggressive and territorial Pokemon that claims large areas for itself. Anything that enters this territory is prey. They possess long, flexible tails capable of puncturing foes. When threatened from a distance, they can blast a spray of weak acid onto the enemy to blind and disorient them. This ability can be intensified to even melt the enemy. Europeans' claws are quite dangerous. Although small and difficult to use during battle, if they manage to clamp down on a foe, they can easily cut them in half. Europeans' abilities are Sniper and Corrosion. With a sludge attack. The next shiny I got was Shiny Weezing and surprisingly gave me quite the appreciation for the horrid creature. The shiny made me think of both sort of an icy coldness but also nasty radiation. And what do you get when you combine those two together? The idea of cold fusion. Sorta. Of. I'm not a scientist or anything. Harry tells me you're quite the science whiz. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. So don't expect some TED talk here. I'm an artist, damn it. My idea here was a sort of mutated version of wheezing. I mean, wheezing already feels like a horrible mutated coughing, so it's like the logical next step, I guess. Our nasty new friend Hacking here grows even more new heads, two of them becoming almost like hands for the Pokemon, a bit like Hydreigon. I can only imagine the ice punches are, I guess, ice headbutts that would come out of it. I wanted a bit of an asymmetry here to really play up that mutated freak feel, so a single sad little face pointing out of the main head, and on the other side a sort of nuclear power silo sticking out like the generic one you'd see from the Simpsons nuclear power plant. Maybe a bit on the nose to give it a warped version of the radioactive symbol, but in a way, Weezing already had a skull and crossbones, so nothing natural about this guy whatsoever. Hacking, the mutant Pokemon, a poison and ice type. Hacking evolves from a shiny Weezing when exposed to an ice stone. Due to the unusual radiation emitted by the ice stone, Weezing transforms into this peculiar distorted form. Additional heads sprout from their bodies, each possessing independent brains and emotions. Surrounding Hacking is a mysterious force that induces sickness in anyone nearby. Hacking cannot control this effect, making it a rather solitary and rarely seen Pokemon. The poisonous gases they release typically remain at room temperature, but can be super cool to freeze opponents. Hacking then laughs maniacally in front of their frozen prey. Hacking have the abilities Levitate and Neutralizing Gas. Alright, I don't want to call anyone out, but who covered my Cramorant in Cheeto dust? That's right, it's everyone's favorite fruit goat. Oh, I can't even actually say that. Why, why did I say that? It's Cramorant. Anyway, my idea for this one was kind of silly and 
kind of morbid as well. I thought, because it does look like it's covered in Cheeto dust and it already is known for trying to swallow Pokemon whole, we could turn Kramerit into a heckin' chunk of gamer of a Pokemon. A large gourmand that managed to keep down the Aracuda and Pikachu and evolved to be a bit of a lazy lad. The actual Pokemon itself is kind of just a larger Cramorant with some extra fancy bits, but what makes it different to its pre-evolution are the wispy ghosts of meals past that now creep out of its mouth. I thought that instead of regular Gulp Missile, Gormorant now has an upgraded version where the souls of the Pokemon are here instead. Maybe doing ghost type damage or something. Still coming out and surf and dive, but also an ominous wind that it'd get on evolution. The flying type is kind of thrown away here, they don't do much of that no more, and replaced with ghost type. It's now one with the spooky ghosts that live within its tummy. <laughs> Gormorin, the overfed Pokemon of water and ghost type. Gormorin evolves from a shiny Cramorin after defeating 30 Pikachu or Aracuda. After gorging itself and evolving, Gormorant loses most of its flight abilities and prefers to waddle on the ground, using its strength to capture prey. Once prey is devoured, a strange phenomenon occurs where the spirits of the Pokemon linger and engage in battle alongside Gormorant, whether they want to or not. These attacking spirits fire out like missiles and disappear upon impact. Gormorant will attempt to devour anything, even creatures much larger than itself, such as Whale Lord. Gormorant has a new ability called Mega Gulp Missile, where when the Pokemon uses Surf, Dive, or Ominous Wind, it will come back with prey. When it takes damage, it will spit out the prey to attack. One of the most divisive Pokemon that I randomized was Quilladin. I love Quilladin, it's a fun SpongeBob looking creature. What's to hate? The shiny is a bit of a strange color, I guess, looking a bit more chestnutty. Now bear with me here because to me this looked a little bit ancient and draconic compared to our normal lad, so that's the direction I decided to go with. Grass type evolutions love to go prehistoric route, so for this one I decided to mix sort of ancient porcupine to that of an ankylosaurus. Yeah, maybe this has a bit of a past paradox energy written on it, but it's close enough to the Evo line to be a shiny evolution. Even more defensive than that of Chestnut, it's a low to the ground, slow moving lad, lined with big spikes and a spike club tail. I think I kept a bit of that goofy nature that Quilladin had here, although I feel like the face maybe could use a change, but it does help show that dragon type across enough. Pin Kilodon, the ancient spike Pokemon, a grass and dragon type. Pin Kilodon evolves from Shiny Quilladin at level 36 while holding a dragon scale. In harsher environments of the past, Quilladin evolved into Pin Kilodon to enhance survival. Their lower center of mass, sharper quills, and robust armor allowed them to easily withstand most assaults. Pin Kilodon is known for its grumpy demeanor, which intensifies when caring for its young. Whole herds of Pink Kilodon will surround their offspring and hunker down, forming impenetrable bastions of defense against any would-be attackers. Their sole vulnerability lies in airborne Pokemon that swoop in to swiftly snatch their young without difficulty. Pink Kilodon have the abilities Overgrow and Iron Barbs. Next I rolled LGM, which its actual shiny isn't too crazy. A slight color change and the little hand dub and parts changed quite a bit. What really got my idea juices flowing uh, were the eyes here. So I went into my mind palace and found an alien that was fitting, well, alien adjacent. And the choice came to me in the Flatwoods monster. Described as alien-like and just being a big 10 foot tall mummy uh, creature, the idea here wasn't the most wild, being a sort of literal interpretation of the Flightwoods monster in the style of the LGM line, having this almost robotic alien mix look to it, but without it being more of the shadowy silhouette that the actual cryptid has. I decided to keep the naming conventions for our Flightwood monsters here, naming it FWM. A bit of a mouthful, but I'm sure we can all deal with that. She has this long, swingly fingers to keep that print color scheme going on, so they can do its own little E.T. moments with you. I can totally see her in-game floating along like a spaceship herself with a very matriarch-like feel to them. I chose Steel as a secondary typing here due to the Flatwoods monster itself said to have come from a meteorite, but I'm sure single psychic typing would have fit well too. 
FWM, the elusive Pokemon, a psychic and steel type. FWM evolves from shiny LGM at level 42 while holding any stone item. According to a witness, FWM emerged from a meteorite alongside a group of peculiar LGM. They all evolved after being exposed to fragments of the meteorite. FWM prefer to inhabit deep dark forests where they observe both people and Pokemon alike. All that can be discerned are their large, unblinking eyes absorbing every detail. Various reports offer conflicting accounts of their abilities. Some claim they simply hiss and flee, while others insist they emit a toxic mist. Their rarity complicates efforts to verify these claims. FWM have the abilities Synchronize and Analytic. Today's video is sponsored by Shiny Drowsy Sleep. Are you having trouble sleeping? Well, for the low, low price of your dreams being used to sustain the Pokemon, then you can have a great night's sleep. Heck, sleep forever with this Pokemon. And if you treat it well enough, you may see it evolve into something special. Put in the offer code BAKUJIN in the comments below and get 10% added to your BAKUJIN stats today. So if you couldn't already tell, Shiny Drowsy is up next and it lets me completely shift away from Hypno, which makes me very, very happy. The shiny colors of Drowsy made me think of Mona and Mashana's Dream Mist, and so I fought a Pokemon that shifts closer to Drowsy's mythological roots to the Baku Tapir was in order. This would be also mixed in with a bit of a genie or Jin sort of look as if the Pokemon was made out of the Dream Mist for the most part. There's actually a few single type Psychic Pokemon in this video that I gave extra typings and I thought Fairy type was fitting to add on to Baku Jin here as it does have a bit of a mythical energy to it. Well, not that kind of mythical. Well, I don't think this would have the same kind of horrible creepy passes as Hypno, but it has those same unfortunate sleep eating habits that Hypno had. This whole line is doomed regardless. Bakujin, the Dreams Pokemon, a psychic and fairy type. Bakujin evolves from Shiny Drowsy after defeating 20 sleeping foes with Dream Eater. Bakujin, a crafty Pokemon with the ability to become completely incorporeal and enter dreams, where they proceed to devour the dreams of their victims. If you find yourself dreaming and noticing slowly disappearing, a Bakujin is likely at work. The dream mist that comprises their body can expand to fill a small room. Anyone within this mist will begin to feel drowsy and quickly fall asleep, making it challenging to escape from this effect. Some have discovered that Bakujin actively avoid vacuum cleaners out of fear of being sucked up by them. There have even been reports of wild vacuums inhabited by Bakujin attacking people. Bakujin have the abilities Levitate and Telepathy. Pumpkaboo is up next, my precious little pumpkin bat... thing. The shiny for this one is amazing, a lovely purple colour that almost screams Halloween even more than its normal version. I wanted to focus on sort of a different kind of gourd and also keep the original idea of Pumpkaboo a bit. This one would be sort of leaning into the almost bat and vampire sort of look it has, but dial it up even further. We have a vampire lord Pumpkaboo here that uses those funny longer kinds of gourds. Although the size and colour does make it look a bit like an eggplant which is fun. Because I wanted it to feel a little off-putting and spooky, I decided to turn our little Pumpire here into a centaur. Four little gourd legs with some hand like wing tie-ins, and we've got ourselves a fun little scary creature. I did end up keeping ghost grass type here, although swapping out the ghost for dark type would have worked too. Although it wouldn't be as spooky without the ghost type. You'd be able to find Pumpire in all different sizes as well, so imagine that each size would have differing stats. But the larger you get, the longer the Pumpire would be. Eggplant emoji, water emoji. Pumpire, the drain Pokemon, a ghost and grass type. Pumpire evolves from shiny Pumpkaboo with a dusk stone. Pumpire are Pokemon averse to light, so they reside in dark houses and forests, emerging only at night to hunt. They shrink their bodies by withdrawing into themselves, lying in wait for prey. When unsuspecting Pokemon pass by, Pumpire use their abilities to drain their life force. Similar to their Gorgas relatives, Pumpire come in various sizes, but they tend to grow longer rather than wider. Pumpire has a new ability called Vampire, which increases the HP restored from draining moves. Our last one, Shiny Duosion, goes from like a kind of greeny color to that of this watery blue. Well, it's not exactly the same as what the line is. I would love the idea of doing a sort of water bear evolution for Duosion. I did a Beast Paradox Ursaring that was also a water bear, but these two are going to be completely different. 
I wanted to keep it fairly similar to that of Reuniclus, being this partially fallen body and head of it in a bit of a rounder and squishier shape, which ended up looking like Catbug in the first iteration. I changed that afterwards. Its body has multiple arms, so I did have to take that into account for the inside of the arms, only opting for one ball instead of the multiple parts of Reuniclus. But I like the idea of it being able to stretch out, maybe even forming more of the ball parts when it attacks with stretchy strikes. I did end up reworking it as it felt a little weird and awkward looking and in the second version I go for a bit of a dynamic pose and just looking a bit cuter in general and a little bit less chonkerous. Tarkleus, the jelly Pokemon, a psychic and water type. Tarkleus evolves from shiny to ocean after surviving a super effective critical hit after level 30. Tarkleus are Pokemon that can be found almost anywhere, thanks to their hardy nature and their ability to survive on minimal food and water. The membrane surrounding their body allows them to easily withstand most weather effects and attacks. Trainers who own Tarkleus also find them to be excellent cooling pillows at night. Despite their soft appearance, the claws of Tarkleus can harden into effective slashing tools, making them formidable in battle. They are capable of outlasting stronger foes due to their exceptional defensive abilities. Tarkleus have the abilities Overcoat and Thick Fat. So what did you think of the shiny evolutions in the video? Don't forget to do all the good YouTube things, do the likes and subs, and comment your favourite of the video. And if you have any suggestions for more good shinies to evolve, Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.